Analysis, research and evidence is used to inform decision making across government and analysts work as multidisciplinary teams and in collaboration with other professions and functions to improve outcomes for the public. To support this, we've created a series of bite-sized learning, introducing some useful analytical terms and concepts, which you might find useful in your role and when working with analysts. In this video, I'll be talking about statistical significance. This is usually calculated when working with samples. If you want to know if there's a real difference between two groups, the best thing would be to measure everyone or everything that falls in each group and observe the difference. This would be the true difference because you will have measured every case. In reality, measuring every case is usually impractical, so analysts have to make estimations of differences based on samples. This introduces a certain amount of uncertainty because any difference may have been obtained by pure chance. When analysts say that a difference they have observed is statistically significant, it means that they have calculated the probability that the difference was obtained by chance, and they've made a decision that the probability is low enough that we can have confidence that there's a true difference in the general population. After calculating the probability that the result was obtained by chance, the analyst then has to make a decision about how much uncertainty is acceptable. The level of significance describes the level of certainty. Commonly used levels are 0.05 level of significance, which translates as a 1 in 20 chance that the result was obtained by chance, or 0.01 level, which translates as 1 in 100 chance. Obviously, a 0.01 level of significance is more reliable than a 0.05 level. In reality, analysts often take many factors into consideration and adjust these levels to compensate for other uncertainties in the data. When an analyst has determined that the difference of observed is unlikely to be pure chance, they may then want to know more about the size of the difference. For this, they measure confidence intervals, which is a range between which they can have reasonable certainty that the true difference lies. Confidence intervals are expressed as a percentage confidence that the true difference lies between these values. For example, if we had two samples of heights, and we observe the difference of 10 centimetres in the means of these two samples, we might want to know more about the size of the true difference. Depending on the number in the sample and the range of heights, we might calculate a 95% confidence interval and get a range for the true difference of 6 centimetres to 14 centimetres. This means there is 95% confidence that the true difference between the groups lies between 6 centimetres and 14 centimetres. The 99% confidence interval might be 4 centimetres to 16 centimetres. This means that there is a 99% confidence that the true difference lies between 4 centimetres and 16 centimetres. You can use this when assessing evidence. If you read a report that claims they found a difference between two groups, the first thing to think about is whether the data they used is a sample. If it is a sample, the analyst should report if the difference is statistically significant. If it is statistically significant, then check what level of significance was chosen. Is there a confidence interval given for the range of the true difference? What percentage of confidence is the interval given? Finally, it's always good to cross-reference any finding like this with other analytical reports to see if other analysts or researchers have found the same thing. When working with samples, it's impossible to eliminate all uncertainty. This is why analysts generally cross-reference between more than one study to make their findings truly robust. We hope you found this useful. If you want to find out more, take a look at the Analysis Function YouTube channel, gov.uk, or sign up to the Analysis Function newsletter by emailing us at analysis.function at ons.gov.uk.